Greetings everyone, and welcome back to Pep Organ. Today I'd like to talk about the problems with music competitions, in particular performance competitions. Now I make this video not to cause any ill will to anyone who is a host or uh, has any involvement in music competitions. I just want to provide my own personal perspective on the whole ordeal as a performer, as someone who's been involved not just in performance competitions for in my younger years, but also uh, hosting a composition competition this year. Um, but I'd like to explain why those two things are a little bit different, and I'd like to also talk about why I feel strongly about this in the first place. So, uh, I've thought about this for a while to come to a conclusion about it, because it's, it is a contentious issue, and it's one that has come up all the time in music publications and articles and journals and everything. Um, people are very divided about this issue, about whether they're ultimately, you know, objectively good or bad for the com music community and music in general, um, whether that means performers, whether it means the jury, whether it means just the general culture of what music actually is. Um, I'm an organist, if you're not watching this, I run an organ channel called Pep Organ. Um, and so what we do here is we publish videos every week where I share music that I really love. I never share music that I don't like to play, and I like to talk about different things uh, related to music, the organ, and, and so on. Um, but competitions, I haven't talked about them before, but here's what I'd like to say. First off, let's break down the problem. There's two goals here, um, the goal of music and the goals of a competition. The goal of music is um, many f manifold, but primarily the goal of it is to please audiences and the community, to elevate our souls, which is more of a, a lofty term, but uh, you, I think you know what I mean by that, and of course to transmit beauty and emotion. And that comes in the form of communication, which um, you may have seen in my video with Ben Adler. Uh, the goal of competition, on the other hand, is firstly to encourage excellence and perfection, especially amongst younger people who are usually the most involved in these competitions. The second purpose would be to prepare these competitors or young people for public performances under pressure. And the final purpose is to determine a winner. Now that's obviously something that competition organizers don't really advertise, it's not really something that anyone explicitly, as far as I know, has admitted about a music competition. But yes, the obvious purpose of a music competition is to determine a winner. Now the problem I have with competition is that it initiates a competitive atmosphere in music rather than a collaborative atmosphere, and it breeds a mixture of elitism, self-doubt, anxiety, comparisons to others, um, stress, and uh, emphasis on practice and performance routines. Let's first talk about perfection. Um, competitions like sports have a lot of emphasis on perfection and excellence in the sense that the one who can score the most goals is going to win the game. But in music, there's many more elements to that. Um, of course, there's the element of creativity and spontaneity and even improvisation. Back in the day, uh, before sound recording, these were very, very highly regarded aspects of music, especially uh, improvisation. In fact, if you listen to early sound recordings, which you can find online, of some of the greatest performers of all time, back in the early uh, 1900s or the late 1800s, you actually hear lots of mistakes in their playing. And this is because before the rise of the music industry, in the modern sense, there was no emphasis on absolute perfection. You would hear a performance once, and you would never hear it again. And that meant that, uh, well, usually when you do go to one performance, you don't really observe every single little mistake that's being made. It's only if you start to nitpick and take it apart, reading the score, listening to it multiple times, that you'll start to hear all those problems. In fact, it makes me wonder, um, because of this emphasis on improvisation and creativity back in the day, rather than perfection, it, it makes me wonder whether Mozart would actually win a Mozart piano competition today. I, I probably, I think he, he wouldn't. Uh, it would be given to someone who does a very flawless, um, expected, typical performance of Mozart, with perhaps a little bit of that creative flair on top of it. But I think that Mozart himself would not have a good chance of winning. The next point is about mental strain. Now, having competed in competitions myself, and also talked to many competitors in these kinds of competitions, I have to report that they all 
mention the same thing, which is the stress and the anxiety and the nervousness of being part of a competition. The majority of people just simply put, do find it a very stressful environment to play and compete against others. Um, it's part of the sociological and psychological element of trying to compete against others in a, in a race or in a battle. It's that same rush of emotions and dopamine that you would get when you're fighting a, a wild animal. It is the same type of experience. Um, I love to play music very much on pep organ, but the thought of doing a competition it, in the past, especially, it's made me want to quit music entirely. I, I really think that for the majority of people, music performances in competitions are not really the ideal place to be sharing music. I, I think that it actually discourages a lot of people from pursuing it as a career because in their earlier years, they lose competitions or they, they, they just don't qualify and they just feel like they're a loser and they can never belong and they can never be a true musician. And I think that's really sad. The next problem I have with competitions is the concept of speed. You see, I wish you luck if you can really win a competition and not play a fast, flashy piece. You just can't win just playing a bit of Bach and then some Mendelssohn. You really have to play something more modern, something more out there, um, maybe Durafle or, or a, a Scherzo of some kind. And um, I don't think that every musician can really play this way. Uh, it's, it's, it is something that young people are better at, of course. Um, but at the same time, it's a carryover from sports, if you think about it. The emphasis on the gymnastic physicality of playing something fast and flashy really is a, is a part of um, the way we think about sports. Who can play the fastest, the flashiest? And it also disadvantages people who can't play that fast just for physical reasons. And I don't think there should be barriers to uh, music just because of that. Does playing a piece at 180 beats per minute make you better than someone who plays at the same piece at 170? I would say in most cases, no, it doesn't really. Now, one of the bigger problems with competitions is the idea of the winner and loser. Is there such a thing as a winner and loser in music? Now, of course, we can hear the difference between an amateur and an expert, um, but how can we really weigh up the musical tastes and the styles of individuals and then rank them uh, as a jury is required to? I would argue more that there is a subjectivity to music that uh, every adjudicator will have their own perspective on. And it's often argued that music competitions are reliant on really good juries, but even in this case, you will not always find that people agree about their um, perspectives. And I've found this, of course, in the past. There have been times when there's an audience prize and the audience prize often doesn't go to the person who ends up winning. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, and I, the other thing I was going to say about winners and losers and about um, the mental strain of it all uh, is that the best performers in the world may not actually be the ones who are the best at playing under pressure. There are so many musicians, um, and I've met them in my life, who play really well when no one's watching. Um, and that doesn't mean that they can't be a fantastic musician. And if they were encouraged in the right ways, they could be a really great contributor to the music um, industry, but also to music as a culture and a community. But they're prevented from this because there are barriers to entry through competitions. Now, I was gonna say that um, there's also one more problem, which I haven't personally witnessed, and I'm not accusing anyone of this, but I do know, uh, and I have read, that in more high-profile competitions, there is a problem of corruption. You see, with so much money on the line and so much um, uh, competition as it is, there is the opportunity for people to try and cheat their way into winning favors from the judges and all sorts of things. And then, of course, there's the other issue, um, which, it's not really corruption, but it is a sort of corruption of the judging process, which is the fact that a lot of people have found that the visual element of a performance actually contributes dramatically to whoever wins the competition. So someone may dress in a certain way and present themselves in a certain way as they walk on stage. And that is actually been shown through psychological studies to be a very strong indicator of who is going to win the competition. So with all these problems, the competitions, uh, and I'm not saying that competitions are entirely um, problematic. Of course, there are lots of great things that lots of people have reported, such as the uh, ability to really challenge yourself. And I, I know people really enjoy that challenge. Um, but 
With all of that aside, there are a lot of problems which I've just mentioned, but what I want to say is the goals of music do not rely on competitions to be achieved. In fact, some of the goals of competitions don't really require competitions either. You see, um, the reason a lot of people continue to do competitions is because no better alternative exists right now for career advancement, especially in places like the piano world. Um, I'm very lucky as an organist to play a lot of solo organ recitals around the city because of the church system. But uh, I feel very sorry for people who play uh, more orchestral instruments and they never get a, a chance to really output and showcase their talent outside of these competitions. The same often goes for aspiring opera singers as well. Um, so my idea for, what's the solution to all this? My idea is to have recitals for young people. Um, and I think this could be something that societies and communities could engage in, uh, music societies around the world. I think that there's a real opportunity for an educational element in this too, especially for the younger people. Um, you see, we could have recitals that invite a number of young organists to play, and then they could be followed by a discussion with the audience. And um, to make it more friendly, you could have morning tea and you could have lunch or whatever. Um, there could even be a sharing of ideas about interpretation and musicality, and also a discussion about matters of performance anxiety and stress in a really encouraging, welcoming environment. Uh, I often find that competitions are so distanced because you have the performers way out there and the audience back here, and then you have announcements of the prize winners and that's all. You never have that sort of interaction directly, which I think could be a really good thing. Back when I was at university, we used to have something called performance workshops, and it would be where uh, each performer would, would go up and play and then come back down and we would talk about the performance and maybe suggest a few things. And it would all be polite, but it would be a very interesting way to share our feelings about the performances and even talk about the issues like stress and, and anxiety. So I think this is such a better method of improvement of character and of performance skills, you see, because people argue that competitions need to exist for the sake of uh, enhancing someone's ability to perform under pressure. But that already can be done through just things like recitals with an educational element, um, all sorts of things like that. There's also the opportunity for music festivals in a more broad sense. So you could still have some of that competing element in the sense that you could have a, um, a tryout round where a number of organists uh, apply to try and be in this festival. And then at the end, you may have a festival where 10 organists, for example, come out and perform. And the great thing about that is that there would be no winner at the end. They would all be um, paid, I would hope, and that at the end, they would also choose music that doesn't have to be flashy and doesn't have to showcase perfection, but instead it could showcase what they love. And then we'd have such a more diverse program and uh, it would just be really great. I think there's a lot of individual element and creativity and as I've said, improvisation that could be thrown into something like a music festival where it could not be in a competition. So as I reiterate from the beginning, the goal of music should really be to please our audiences and our community uh, elevate ourselves and transmit beauty and emotion. And I'm just afraid that fast and flashy performances, performances that are under stress and pressure and uh, causing too much uh, difficulty for musicians and limiting the people who would really love to perform but never get that chance, I think that all of those things don't co correspond very well to music, right? And without competitions, there would still be excellence. It's not like we would lose the, the, the best of the best people if we didn't have competitions. Obviously, the top cathedrals around the world require really talented organists. But beyond that, anyone of any age and living anywhere, um, especially with the internet now, is very welcome to promote excellence of their own. Um, if you want to show the world something, a new type of interpretation of a piece of music, you're welcome to do so, and you don't need a competition or any sort of platform to do so. Uh, what well, the platform is, the internet it could be, or it could be your local church or whatever you want. There's always an opportunity to improve yourself without that risk of prize money and the stress and all of those other things. I think that we have to enjoy music and enjoy performing. And a lot of people are turned off because they focus so much on the pressure of a, a performance rather than enjoying what they can do and enjoying the music that they want to share, that they love. And that's what we all should be doing. Now, the final thing before I end this video is just talking about um, whether I'm a hypocrite because I host a composition competition here on Pep Organ. But I'd like to argue why that's a little bit different to performance 
in, in the strict sense. Um, and that's mostly because compositions do not have that temporal immediate component to them. So when you're composing, you can do it over the space of months. Usually there is a, a few months to do so. Uh, you can put yourself under pressure by limiting your time and procrastinating, but really there, you are welcome to compose a piece very slowly over a few months. Um, that's usually the time frame for a composition competition. And I think that also um, you can compose well and you can compose poorly and you can sort of acknowledge that and composition can often speak for itself and we may want to distance composition from ourselves in a way that we don't really do so in performance. What I mean by this is that um, you may compose something and it doesn't win and that doesn't mean you need to give up on composition. It just means that that composition in particular was not as effective as another one that was also done in that competition. I think it's a very different as aspect um, and I think that it's not such a problem in composition. It may ha still have its flaws, but I think that for the sake of uh, performers and audiences who really want to go out and hear the best of the best, we should encourage good compositions because it is a really big underlying foundation of what makes music great in the first place. With all that said, I hope you found this interesting and useful and uh, I'm very open to having heated debates in the comments section below if you strongly disagree with my view. But for now, thanks for watching and please subscribe to Pep Organ. Thank you.